Hello, um, we're just about ready to start Kubernetes styled CI CD uh, with Harshad. And um, I had to close all my other tabs because they were very noisy. So um, Harshad, I'm going to start it now. If anybody has any problems with the audio, just let me know in chat. Also, I'll be pinning the link to the video. If you do have any issues, um, you can go and watch it direct from that link um, in the chat. Thank you. All right. I'm going to hit start and mute myself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to DevConf US 2020. Hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. I'm very excited to be presenting uh, here. I'll be presenting Kubernetes style CI CD system. Following would be the agenda for today's talk. We'll be going through uh, uh, the whole design and implementation of the CI CD system with, with some knowledge about Tekton uh, tools. And then I'll be telling you more about my challenges, the challenges which I face, and some insights on the whole development process. Before starting, let me introduce myself. I'm Harshad Reddy Nalla. I'm a software engineer working in AI Center of Excellence Red Hat, currently stationed in Boston. I'm a part of AI DevSecOps team. We work on a project called DOT. It's an AI stack recommendation system. Uh, it recommends Python package modules based upon performance and security. Uh, I'm currently focusing on the AI COACI. Uh, that's a Kubernetes style CI CD, uh, which, which is this whole talk based upon. I'll be talking more about it how we designed and implemented it, and also showing a demo about that. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So the goal for this talk was uh, is to share my findings and learnings when I uh, started to build this CI CD tool with Tekton pipelines and triggers. So before going into the design and implementation, let me ask you, why do we care about the CI CD? The CI CD is a very integral part of the de uh, the, uh, the big, uh, integral part of the DevOps team or the DevOps architecture or the uh, DevOps lifecycle, right? When a when a developer or a contributor contributes to a source code, they make some new changes. They they send these new changes for a review. While the reviewer's job is to review the source uh, the new changes for the source code he or she doesn't have to ensure on the syntax styling or linting or any of the PyTest or checks on the testing or the end-to-end -end testing of this new changes. This all things can be taken care of by the continuous integration system. The reviewer can focus on reviewing the actual uh, course, uh, core code of the new changes. Uh, and once it he or she feels like they are valid, uh, they are okay to be merged, they, the CI, CI system, uh, the CI system can move the code in. Once this code gets into the source code, it's, it needs to be delivered to the production environment or the development environment. So there the delivery part comes in. So today we'll be talking about the continuous integration delivery system. Uh, the de continuous deployment, we are, not, uh, we are not considering that right now. We are just focusing on the integration and delivery aspect of it. As we wanted to build this system, we wanted something which can run on premise of OpenShift. Um, as, as all our core workloads runs on OpenShift, uh, so we wanted to concentrate on that, those apps, aspects. While researching about it, we got to know that there's no one CI which fits all the application. The, the team or the maintainers have to decide on their CI CD tool based on their applications. So it's true that no one size fits all. As the applications are moving towards microservices from monolithical architecture, similarly, we would uh, sim uh, similarly the, the deployment infrastructure is also moving from from virtual machines to containers. As the applications have been mo are moving so fast towards the Kubernetes environment, we would like to have a CI/CD tool which is also running its workload on a on a containerized environment. So thus, the whole 
uh, uh, the whole focus on building a CI CD tool through with a community style. So while doing this, we come up while trying to develop something like this, we come, came across TechDoc. TechDoc is an open framework which uh, allows the allows the user or the developer to build CI CD tail systems with its tool. It's very it's uh, it was uh, created or and contributed uh, by Red Hat and Google contributors. It's now a part of C C uh, CD Foundation. Uh, before learning about Tekton, we would have to learn about Tekton terminologies. We can't just uh, go right into the Tekton designing and implementing a Tekton pipeline without knowing it terminologies, right? So let me take you through the journey of learning like what these terminologies are and how they are used um, while developing the pipeline uh, for the CI CD tool. So first is a step. Step is a very is this, uh, the smallest uh, working piece of code in the pipeline. Step would be um, uh, references the container image that ex uh, which, which would execute a specific script. A task would be um, task would uh, be running this series of steps, and a task run would be something which will initiate this, uh, which uh, initiate this whole task. For example, um, the, uh, take building an image. So building an image would be a task. So what would be the steps involved in it? Of uh, first step would be to gather all the information to build that image. Second task would be to use a Docker and uh, or a, con a container or orchestration tool such as Builder or Portman to build that. The third task would be to publish them into a image stream registry. So this would be the following steps in our task. And if you if we execute this task on an um, uh, on onto the onto the cloud native environment, that becomes a task one. Moving further, there is pipeline and pipeline resources. Pipeline resources is a place where you will uh, define all the base information, such as in images or Git resources. So Git resources could be anything such as uh, if you are describing your whole Git repository, to where to clone the repository from, or to gather the pull request information, this would be the place where you would initialize that. Pull request uh, pipeline resources also gathers information from the output of the step of a task. And pipeline would be, uh, uh, pipeline runs a series of tasks. And pipeline run is the uh, is the initiator which will initiate the pipeline execution. So let me explain you well more um, better with this example like So if you see on your left side with the shaded blocks, those are the pipeline resources such as GitHub repository and the image. Here the image is a UBI image. A GitHub repository could be my repository. So the following other blocks are describing the task, like a code quality check, accept environment, build image, or publish, or deploy them. The whole, this whole uh, figure describes a pipeline. And once we run this pipeline with some inputs, uh, those uh, that becomes a pipeline run. If you see that smaller chunk of code where, uh, where it's written task run, so if, uh, well, when the GitHub resource, the GitHub repository resources are provided to the task and the task is executed, that becomes a task run. So a pipeline constitutes of uh, several task runs. That's how it can be defined. As we learn about the terminologies of the pipeline, let's learn some more terminologies of the Tekton trigger. A Tekton trigger takes the event payload from a webhook and provides that to a resource template. So, what are the what are the core uh, components used here? This event listener, which will be continuously listening to the HTTP request from the from the webhook from any of the GitHub uh, environments like a GitHub or GitLab, or it can also take uh, direct webhook um, payloads. So, the JSON payload from this event listener is passed to the trigger binding. Trigger binding maps this. Uh, match the content of the JSON payload to the required or to gather the required parameters. These required parameters 
tasks are provided to a trigger template and trigger template passes those parameters to the pipeline run. So this describes the whole concepts of like uh, basic concepts of Tekton triggers and Tekton pipelines. But using these components, we can build the whole CI CD system. Let's jump into like how, what design constraints or what design requirements we had and thus, and then I'll be explaining you with all these components, how we built a CI CD tool. So as most of our projects are AI ML oriented, we wanted to focus on them. Most, uh, so all the projects are Python based. So we wanted to have some st static checks, unlearning checks and st styling checks. Static checks could be uh, like PyTest, running some test, PyTest, end-to-end test. Lending checks would be running some PyDocs uh, styling or um, some of the Flake 8, Flake 8 uh, checks. Once we were done with the checks on the pull request, we also wanted to release these applications. So a Python application can be either a module or it could be a running application. A Python module, uh, has to be released to PyPI, and then you can use it as a, a, a package. Um, and if it's an application, you can containerize them and then deploy it into an OpenShift environment. So we wanted a CI system, CI CD system, which can enable us to do some code checks while a pull request on a pull request, mm -hmm. and also enable us to do some releases on the source code. So we focused on two aspects here. One was on pull request and another was the tag release. So as a contributor makes a pull, creates a pull request, the CI services will trigger a pipeline, a pull request pipeline. A pull request pipeline will run some status status checks such as um, pi test, linting checks, and then also, also check for the build checks. If the whole application can be built into a container, container image or not. Once this process is done, the checks will return the validation. If the validations are all true, the reviewer can uh, review the source code. And if the reviewer as accepts the source, uh, the new changes, then the new changes can be merged into the source code. Once all these so all the pull requests are merged into the source code, and the maintainer decides to release a tag, the tag release pipeline will be triggered from the CI. The tag release pipeline. Uh, builds, uh, runs a image build task, or based upon the application, if it's an application as a module, then it runs a PyPI release task. Once this task is run, the task based upon the application will either release the image to the PyPI uh, index, or else uh, it creates the uh, container image and passes it to image, image registry, and then updates that tag into the customized manifest so that it can be deployed into the Kubernetes orchestration, OpenShift. So this is what we focused on, and this is what was the requirement and how we designed it. So let me show you the architecture diagram and explain you through that, and then I'll explain you the implementation from the source code, and then I'll show, then I'll show you some live demo. So this is the architecture which we follow. We have, so on the left side, you have source code from the GitHub repository and also from some of the GitLab repositories. So both of them uh, triggers uh, some pay, some uh, some webhooks on on pull request or the merge request. One so this webhook triggers to the Tekton pipeline running in our environment. It starts a Tekton pipeline for the pull request uh, run. So the pull request pipeline uh, run some cert certain tasks such as lint checks, unit checks, and syntax checks. So once this task completes, it sends out the results to the status check uh, on GitHub. So these status steps could be uh, based upon the results of our task. If the task has completed successfully, they will send out a true, uh, true status to the GitHub. And once these status are corrected, as you know, re reviewer will review the code and merge and click on merge and the merge will, the new changes will go into the source code. Another aspect was, like I said, was the tag release. On each tag release, the ticket will send out a webhook to the Tekton pipeline. The Tekton pipeline will start 
on the tag release pipeline. The tag release pipeline has a task called build image. The image will be built. And then there's a delivery task, which will deliver that image to the image registry. And as of now, we are using the Red Hat Quake to take them. Let me explain you. Let's, let's dig into the some implementation demo. So I'll show you some of the source code, explain you through each component, how it's been designed and what is the um, what is the purpose of it and how they will be um, how they are a part of the whole big pipeline of the CICD tool chain. And then I'll show you the live um, the live demo, like how it works in, in actual. Uh, so let's go through it. Um, so uh, the whole pipeline is the application is called AICOECI. The it's it's been de developed based on the Tekton pipelines and the OpenShift pipelines, and it is available on GitHub. It is also a GitHub application, so you can download it into your own repository and use it based on that. So before going into the development of the pipeline, first we have to install the Tekton pipeline and Tekton triggers. There is a setup script in the GitHub repository of the AICOECI, or else you can Use the use the actual Tekton pipeline repositories to install based upon the instructions. You can just read through them and install the Tekton pipeline and a Tekton trigger. Apart from these two, we also install Tekton dashboard. Tekton dashboard enables you to it gives you a UI where you can visualize all these pipeline runs. So I have already set it up for today's demo, um, and let me show you that in an open shift. And on it, I have deployed Tekton dashboard, Tekton pipelines, uh, Tekton triggers. So all this is running. There's a webhook uh, listener and there's a Tekton webhook listener as well. So once you have done this, we have to, as I said, first we have to design a event trigger a listener. So let me show you some source code and let's talk through that. So first is the event listener. As you can see, this is the event listener manifest. So in the event listener manifest, we are concentrating on two components as of now. So one is the event called pull request and another is called the tag release. So in GitHub, whenever a pull request is triggered, there is an event type added to it. It's called pull request to that payload. So as um, a pull request um, is generated into GitHub, GitHub sends a webhook. Uh, to the event listener. Event listener listens to that, takes the uh, takes the JSON payload and passes that to GitHub, uh, sorry, trigger binding. So trigger bindings can be defined as this. And once the trigger bindings have been passed, the trigger bindings takes out the important information from the JSON payload. The JSON payload takes that information. Uh, from the JSON payload, the trigger binding takes the information such as event actions, PR pull request number, the repository to which pull request was traced, repository full name, pull request URL, and repo URL. All this information is then passed to the Tekton, Tekton trigger template. Tekton trigger template is a resource template which uh, basically runs a Tekton pipeline run. So it describes all the parameters which are passed through the Tekton uh, trigger binding and then pass those trigger bindings to resource template. Those resource template is a pipeline run in this case. So the pipeline take, pipeline run takes all this environment to environment and it passes this information to a pipeline. Here the pipeline is described as Tekton CI pipeline. That's the name we have given here. And it has, I mean, we have provided all the parameters. With all these parameters, along with all these parameters, we also pass some resources. These are the pipeline resources, which you can be, which we can uh, which we can describe in, in in an additional manifest file, or we can also describe them in inline. So here, some of the resources are being described in inline with the resource spec. The resource spec defines that you are describing inline. You're saying that this type of resource is a Git type. Um, you're using the report repository URL. So based upon this, it will clone the repository, whichever whose whose report 
whichever repository URL is passed to this. So this URL is a parameter. This parameter comes from the JSON payload as we know. So as, as one pull request has been triggered, that whole the whole value travels from the event listener JSON payload, trigger binding, trigger template, and to this resource. Apart from this, you can, as I said, you can describe the resources into a manifest file. Here you see this s 2 i dot image, UPI 8 image. We have taken a reference. So these have been described in the resource file. So let's look through that. So here we have described the s 2 i dot image. So the image which we are using is the s 2 i dot base image, which is developed by the dot project team. Uh, and then there's a UBI 8 image. So we are passing those images as also resources which can be used in Tecton task. And then the pull request itself. So there's a pull request type, type pull request. In this, if we provide the URL, it, it captures the pull request information into a JSON which is available for each task. One thing to remember here is that each pull request from a from a public repository can be pulled directly, but from a private repository to be pulled, a pull request to be pulled from a private repository requires some secrets, so authentication secrets. So you can provide that authentication token, the SSH keys through the secret to directly to the resource. As we as we have gone through the trigger template and pipeline run, now we know that once this trigger template is triggered, this pipeline would be run. So let's go through the pipeline. The pipeline describes about in the spec, we describe the parameter and the resources which we have gathered from the pipeline run. And then we describe some task references. So all these task references corresponds to, each task references corresponds to a task run here. So for, let's look through one task run. So there's one task run, which is a pre-commit check. In this task run, we are describing that this is the task which we need to run. While you're doing that, we want to do some pre-checks before the task is run. As, as, as in Tecton, what happens is if you run a task and if the task fails, the whole pipeline fails. There could be some, some st uh, st steps in which the pipeline, the task can result into failure, right? So before doing that, it would be better if we do some some condition checks. For that, Tecton provides something called Tecton conditions. So Tecton conditions, public conditions, are also a subtask, but their failure doesn't result into pipeline failure. Their failure just results into check failure. So we are just checking if the actual pull request has an action open. If it's closed, we don't want to run these checks. Uh, we are also checking um, some other components. And once it's done, if these conditions are true, then, then only the pipeline will run. Also, all the pipeline will also assert this task will be run. The task will consider some of the parameters and the resources from the pipeline. And run after basically states that until unless this task have been run, please do not run the pre-commit check. So as we learned about the task one, let's go through the task, the pre-commit check task. So in the task, we have described the parameters which we gathered from the pipeline, resources which we get from the pipeline. Now we are describing the steps. First step is taking the information from the pull request and gathering all the information or the changes which were created in the pull request. So we got that changes from the pull request, we checked out a branch, and now we are running some tests on it. We already have a base image for this task. Uh, Pre-commit checks are basically a um, series of checks, uh, like Py, my PyPy checks, Python, uh, Python PyTest checks, Flake 8 checks, Pep 8 checks. So all these are already containerized into an image, and we would use this image in the step to run a simple script which is pre-commit check run all, on all files. So we are running this raw pre-commit check on the all files in that pull request. So the changes have been checked. And once the checks have been run, we update the pull request with information as a status run. We are saying 
if it was a successful check or not. Once it's done, the pipeline completes. And let's look through this pipeline in a live execution. So let's go to the GitHub. This I have already I have, I have set up a uh, I've set up I've set up a, a GitHub repository for today's de demonstration. I have already opened a pull request with some changes to the repository. I made a single change that I added a print statement into my app.py say stating that oh uh, I'm very excited to to present in DevCon 2020. So when the pull request started running, there was the CIC, the CICD system started running. With the CICD system running, it did two checks. One is build check and a pre-commit check. As we see, the, the pre-commit check has failed because there was some issues with the PyDoc, but the build check has finished. So let's see how this results into a Tekton uh, pipeline, right? So in the Tekton dashboard, you can go to the pipeline run. In the section of AICV pipeline run, we see the bunch of tests running. We see the pipe pre-commit check running. As we can see, first we gather the pull request information. Okay, so let me explain to you first what happened. There was a webhook which triggered the event listener. The event listener triggered the trigger, trigger binding and the trigger binding passed really that to trigger template. The trigger template started a pipeline run. The pipeline run is called AICV pipeline run this has started the pipeline which had series of task runs the task runs have started to execute now we are investigating on one task the one task was pre-commit check one there was one step to gather the information from the pull request we gathered some information from the pull request we run some test all the tasks completed we send those information through a webhook again to get up as you can see the, the step was failed so we returned a failure and you can see it's a failure here. And now similarly, we have, we have a, we have, we have a tag release pipeline. So the tag release pipeline on each creation, it takes some of the information like version of the tag, uh, what type of tag is it and name of the URL. Similarly, it's passing to a tag template template. It runs its own pipeline, it's called tag release pipeline. Let's go to the tag release pipeline. In the tag release pipeline, it's basically checking what configurations do you have? Uh, should we build, should I build it to uh, release into PyPI or should I um, build to con make it as a container image? So let's go and see what happens when you are building it to a container image. You're taking gathering all this information. First is to check if it can be pushed to an image stream or not, image registry. Yes, we can push it to image registry. So we gather the information of a task in the next step. We take a S2I build, we are building with the information. As you can see, it's a, I have added a script which checks if it needs to be built with Docker file as to I from a source to image or from a Docker or from a container file. Based upon the application, if you see here from the source code, it's, it is it is considered containing a Docker file. So this Tekton pipeline of task release should run the Docker file. And as we can see, it's gathered the Docker file information and it has built based upon the Docker file. So if you consider the changes in the Docker file, it's basically take Python 3.6 into a seven, it adds the output file file and there's a command. So it has taken the Python 3.6 CentOS file, taking the app and then uh, uh, and container is added to image. And now this image is pushed to a query repository. We have pushed the query repository uh, from the second step. So once we have built, we have pushed it. So while pushing it, we also provide the configuration for the, it to push it to a query repository. As this step is executed, the image is pushed to the query repository, as you can see here. So this is how the whole Tekton pipeline executes. Let us uh, go back to the demo. Uh, let us go back to the presentation. I hope you un understood how the pipeline works. 
There were some few challenges while designing all this implementation. First, as I explained, while interacting, the CICD needs to know how to interact with private repositories. I showed you how you can set up a secret and attach that to the SSH connection. The another challenge was to that you need to pass one result to another task. There's a Tekton result resource which you can read up on, on the Tekton uh, pipeline uh, readme, and you can use that to store results and pass that, uh, pass those as a parameter. Uh, use that to store the results into a file and then use this file to uh, do this resources to use by as a parameter to pass them to the next task. Apart from this, there is there is some of the st steps which you need to follow while maintaining the connection between running pipelines and a GitHub status. So while you're doing that, when you're executing a step, you can always pass those information to GitHub as a status check, as I showed you, it shows you if a pipeline task has failed or not. So these were the few common challenges which we faced and we figured out a way around through them and we worked to, to overcome them. And next, uh, let me show tell you some of the insights while developing it. We realized that all these Tekton pipelines can be directly plugged into other CI tools like Proof. So you don't need to run it as a, a as an individual CI, if you want, if you want, you can add it into your pre-existing CI pipeline. If you have something like Pro, which is also a Kubernetes-based CIC, CS tool, there's. Uh, we also figured out that uh, you can also add this, uh, which also works. The CI/CD system works very well along with additional CI tools such as Zool or Argo, uh, which which can be used for gating, and then you can use. Um, the CI CD systems to run some checks. They will in very well, uh, very well with the sync with a synergy because all of them uses YAML arguments and manifest files. So they work very well together. Where one of the biggest things which, which we looked into was like while developing, we were using uh, OpenShift 3.11 and we realized that Tekton pipeline version 10.2 was the last version which supported that version. So please be careful while you're developing to miss to check which Tekton pipeline matches which Kubernetes version and if you can implement that in your OpenShift or not. While deploying your cluster, uh, your Tekton pipelines into the cluster, you need priv admin privileges. So these are some things which you need to keep in mind while deploying and developing such tools. Hope all this information helps you to build a CI CD tool. And if you need more information, you can uh, visit, uh, I've added some of the references here. The first two references are of the application which we developed. I have added some of the readme's. Maybe I haven't gone through each and every detail. I wanted to just cover a lot of lot of topics in this short duration. So a few of the topics, a few of the things you can check through uh, from the readme. If you have more questions, you can open uh, issue over there. If you want to contribute, please feel free to contribute. We would like others to contribute to this project. Apart from this, I've also added some of the references from the from the upstream community Tekton and also the OpenShift pipeline. OpenShift pipeline is the downstream of the Tekton pipeline, which is currently being contributed by Red Hat uh, contributors. So please feel, please feel free to have a look at it as well. Thank you so much for attending my talk. I hope you learned a little bit about how to develop a CI CD with a based uh, on a Kubernetes style. Uh, if you have more questions, please reach. You can reach me. You can reach out to me on the following links. And for more information about Toth, uh, you I have also provided the I've also provided some links about that. You can reach out to them. Thank you so much. Uh, have a have a really good day uh, in the DevConf um, while uh, looking through all the DevConf presentations. Thank you. Stay safe. Hey Harsha, thank you so much for that. That was a a great present. Oh, oh, I am mute. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Hold on. Uh, just a
next video playing in YouTube <laughs> on my end. Um, so I don't see any questions. Um, I am really interested in this topic. I work on OpenShift. Do you also work on OpenShift? Uh, not exactly on OpenShift, but we tell most of our applications run on OpenShift. So we have to relate to oh, it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the OpenShift CI, CD, we use Prow. Um, yeah. Kubernetes Pro, yep, and it is insane and complicated and uh, brings together over a hundred different repositories that all need to stay in sync and not break each other. You know, the, the complete OpenShift release payload is made up of over a hundred different repositories, I, I believe, at this point, and uh, it's complicated and um, absolutely necessary to keep, keep things rolling. Uh, a, a dependable and um, working CI CD. Yeah. Yes, uh, definitely. I actually looked into Pro and uh, that was a, like that was the first step when like, look, when we were searching for all the CI CD tools, that's the one which we came across because we work very close with OpenShift team and we know like they provide us the de details and, but then we went on to looking more and then there was, there was tech on and we just thought maybe, oh, why not? Let's try mm -hmm. to develop it again. And then mm -hmm. you can just embed it in Probe because Probe has this feature where you can uh, include it into Probe jobs. So you're sending out the GitHub uh, or GitLab web hooks, but it's going reaching Probe, but Probe is tri triggering the Tecton pipelines. So it's not running its own jobs, but it's running pipelines. So in that oh, way, uh, you can do this. So all this is plug and play. So you don't need to change anything. You just need to remove the tri Tecton trigger, just put it into Probe and it works exactly the same. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. Um, so we do have the breakout room. Um, yes. If you uh, have any other questions, um, otherwise, thank you so much. And you can uh, watch Harshad's link. Um, I pinned it above and it will be updated in the schedule when I get to it. Maybe a few minutes. Thank you so, so much. Th thank you so much. Yep. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the talks.